declared this morning that we will not settle for less because there is more that is found in you. So Lord, we glorify. Lord, we lift up your name. Father, help us to be discerning, O God, to that which is in you, O God. Thank you that for that which you have in store for us. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. For oh God, that your God will multiply grace upon grace in the lives of your people. Father, we declare an open heaven over the, the lives of your people today. An open heaven over this gathering, O oh God. And wherever your people are watching in from, I pray today, O oh God, may you by the Spirit and by the power of God, may you just minister strength. May you minister life. May you, O oh God, just minister grace over the lives of your people. We pray the protection of God. We pray the covering of God. We pray, O oh God, may the voice of the Lord be made loud in their hearing. This we ask in Jesus' name. We say, welcome, Holy Spirit, O oh God, as we worship and as we praise you this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 The book of Luke chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Amen. That we know that when Jesus went into, sorry, when he went to be tempted, the Bible says he was full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That means before he even went into the challenges that he had to face, he was full of the Holy Ghost. And even during that 40 days, the Bible says he was tempted of the devil. Not just the last few days when he hungered, 
the Bible says throughout the 40 days he was tempted, he was tested. And this was his response. In verse 4, it says, and he says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. When he was tempted, he also said, get thee behind me, Satan. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. That means when you are tempted, when you are tested of the enemy, when, when the devil comes to test you and, and try you, may you be able to say, it is written. May you be able to say, this is what the word of the Lord says concerning this. Now, this is the important part. Even through the trials, through the temptations, the Bible says that when he, when he comes out of it, it says at the end, when the devil had ended the temptation and departed from him for a season, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to, into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout the land. Now, this is what this was happened. Jesus was filled with the Spirit, being tested. When he came out of it, he was still filled with the Spirit. I pray for, your, for you, each one of you, that we will be filled with the Spirit of God continuously. And whatever the test that we will come into, whatever will test us, that God will bring us through that because we are anointed to overcome. Amen? I declare over your life today that you are anointed to overcome every attack of the enemy over your life, over your family, over your loved ones in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then he says when he came out of it, he was, the, he was full of the power of the Spirit of God. And what happened? When he came out of it, people looked at him and they were drawn to him. Why? Because he's overcome something. I'm telling you that when you come out of your moment of testing, when you come out of your moment of trial, when you come out of it, People are going to be drawn to you because they're going to say there's definitely the hand of the Lord upon this person that they were able to be victorious. Come on, amen. That I pray today that you would not just have faith to go through a, a moment. You would not just have faith to just go through a period of time in your life. You would have faith to see the hand of the Lord bring you through every season. Now I want you to understand this. This is why it's important for us to be filled with the power of God. And the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, after the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Just because you're anointed, it does not mean you would not be tempted and tried of the devil. It's because you are anointed you're going to be tested. Amen? And when you come out of it, the Bible says, he says, and the devil departed from him for a season. That means there's going to be tests and trials throughout different parts of your life. There'll be seasons when you're going to go through different tests. And the tests will be different in every circumstance. It not, may not necessarily be the same. But I pray that the grace and the anointing of God that's upon your life will give you the ability to overcome and you will experience the power of God. Come on. Father, we come before you today. I pray for a spirit of an overcomer over your people. That the Bible says that the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus lives in us. And so that same anointing that was on Jesus as he entered into the wilderness and as he overcame the enemy of God and he confounded him by the words of his declaration, I pray may there be an authority that will come to your sons and daughters that they will be able to overcome every challenge, every obstacle, everything that comes their way. And in the name of Jesus, we declare, O oh God, may the grace of the Lord be multiplied over their lives victory, breakthroughs, oh God, and that they are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen. Amen. Come on, we're going to worship God, and I'm going to hand over to Lorenzo and the team. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You all blessed this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Amen. We're going to put our praise on right now and give Him all the glory. No matter how we're feeling right now, come on, we're going to dance. Oh, Lord. I'm going to dance and praise Him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. His name is, His name is Jesus. You know. Yes. 
inside of you. Come on. His name is Jesus. You born, born. I'm born again. You born, born. More than victorious. You're a hair right now. I'm a hair of the skin. And you will with the Holy Ghost. Fill with the Holy Ghost. I rejoice. Oh, I rejoice in you. I rejoice in you. I rejoice in you. In the comfort this morning, come on. More than a comfort, I rejoice. I rejoice in you. I rejoice in you. I die. I rejoice. Hallelujah. You stand the more than comfort. More than a comfort. No weapon. No weapon formed shall ever prosper, says the Lord. Shall ever prosper. You know why? The greater one lives inside of me. And you this morning. His name is Jesus. You born, born. I'm born a winner. You born, born. More than victorious. You're the hair right now. I'm in the hair on his face. And you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's rejoice. I rejoice. I rejoice in you, Lord. Yeah. 
walking in power and miracles this morning. Wherever you are, you're standing strong. You won't be shaken. What you see, yeah, yeah, you see his glory. Cause I'm gonna take a look, take a look at me. That's a matter right now. What you see now, can you see his all over this place? Cause I'm gonna take a look, take a look at me. I'm gonna watch. That's a matter right now. of a faithful God, and right now, things are about to change in your life, yeah, but you gotta believe in Him, you gotta trust in Him, yeah, say, take a look, take a look at me, I'm a one, doesn't matter right now, doesn't matter what you see now, you see His glory, cause I know who I am, take a look, take a look at me, I'm a one, it doesn't matter right now, doesn't matter what you see now, God praise, amen. He calls us his friend. We belong to the Father right now, amen. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. It's so amazing to praise him. But I want you to know that we serve an intentional God. That all things, not just some things, are working for your good this morning. Come on. In your homes, in your families, in your workplace. Let's sing. Oh. It's 
working for me. It's now turn around and tell somebody, me. you don't have to worry about anything. You, you don't, don't have, have to worry about Yeah, speak life it's upon them right now. You. Oh, it's working for you. It's working for you. And you, and you. It's working for you. You don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about it. It's working for you. It's working for you. It's working for you. It's working for you. to worry because God's taking care of everything. There's nothing too big for our God. Oh, right now in His presence, anything can happen if we just believe and trust in Him. Oh, yeah. things are turning around that even you won't be able to explain this right now. Something, something is about to happen. I can go. I can explain it. I sense the master's presence. Something, something is about to happen. Four signs, four signs and wonders are in the man's. We believe this this morning. Oh, something, something, yeah, is about to happen. about to have oh, signs and wonders oh, signs and wonders are in the master's presence singing oh, oh, oh I see his glory I see his glory and oh my God and oh, oh I sense his 
power. I sense His power. This is your moment right now. This is the moment. This is my turnaround. This is my turnaround. Receive. I receive my miracle. About to happen. I can, I can explain it. I sense the master's presence. Something, something we declare is about to happen. More signs and wonders, more signs and wonders are in the master's presence. Something, something right now. Something is about. Yeah. 
we just honor you, Lord. We honor you, we glorify you. You are worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy. Come on. We worship and adore you. Father, we declare that this is the moment. This is my turnaround. We believe in you today. This morning, if you would have faith and only believe, all things are possible. You can declare this morning in faith that seasons are changing in your life. So when we sing the song, this is my moment, this is my turnaround, you are making a prophetic declaration. You're saying, irrespective of what I'm going through, irrespective of what the challenges are right now, I'm declaring a turnaround in my life. Come on, somebody. You see, somebody, the person next to you, doesn't need God to do this as much as you need God to do this. So wherever you are right now, won't you just, you just say, Lord, I believe in you. I prophesy over my life. I prophesy over my home, I prophesy over my family that there is a turnaround. I believe in you, O oh God. Let there be a turnaround, O oh God, of, of, of situations. Let there be a turnaround of circumstances. Let there be a turnaround in the name of Jesus. We honor you. We bless you. We bless you. I thank you, O oh God, that you're enlarging territories. I thank you, O oh God, that you are establishing homes. You're establishing marriages. You're establishing families. Oh, in the name of Jesus, you are able, O oh God. You are able. You are able. You may be seated while we're still in the attitude of prayer. Kusharamanda labasatai. Can we, this morning, if you are not well in body and you're just trusting God for a physical healing right now, wherever you are, just stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet wherever you are. And if you're able, I want you to just extend your faith. If you are trusting God for healing over your body, or you may be standing proxy of, for a loved one or a family member. Just stand and just say, Lord, I'm trusting you. You are able to do it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring your sons and your daughters before you. And we speak healing. We speak like Jesus would declare. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. We declare that by the stripes of Jesus you are healed. We speak that our bodies will respond to the word of the Lord. And so today you said you sent forth your word. And you healed all of their sicknesses. You healed all of their diseases. And I believe today oh God that every system in the body will respond to the word of the Lord. That infections will die in the name of Jesus. I speak, oh God, a rejuvenating, a regenerating of the body in the name of Jesus. I speak to the bodies to function normally in the name of Jesus. Every condition, everything that has a name will bow to the name of Jesus. We declare that you are Jehovah Rapha and by your stripes your sons and your daughters are healed in the name of Jesus. So we say be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Kusharamande. Every infection, every inflammation. We speak healing in Jesus' name. Right now. Right now. Right now. We believe in you, God. The person that is struggling with a pain running down their left leg. Lord, he be healed in Jesus' name. Heal completely. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.
Some of you that may be here this morning and those that are watching online, you may be trusting God for a breakthrough in your home or your family. You are trusting God just for breakthrough in your employment. You, you may be trusting God for an open door. You may be even trusting God just for a better employment. There may be some relationship, maybe some anxiety, some challenge that you are going through right now. We're going to pray for you. You don't have to stand, but wherever you are, just join with me in faith. Father, we know, oh God, that even as our faces differ, so does our need. And so today, Lord, we speak deliverance. We speak restoration. We pray for answered prayers. We speak that doors will open. Doors of opportunity for employment will open. I pray, O oh God, that you will bless your people. They will be good and faithful stewards. I pray for where relationships are, are, are estranged and relationships are broken. May there be a restoring. Father, I pray, O oh Lord, where there's a need for deliverance, may you bring deliverance in Jesus' name. So we pray by the power of God and by the Spirit of God and the grace of God that you, O oh God, will perform a miracle in the lives of people. Father, I pray, O oh God, that whatever is holding your people bondage, whatever is, is enslaving your people, that you would deliver them in Jesus' name. Deliver them. Oh God, I pray, oh God, for the homes, oh God, where they're just trusting you for joy and they're trusting you for strength. We declare today, you've given us beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garments of praise with the spirit of heaviness. We declare today there's a lifting in the hearts of your people. There's a lifting in the name of Jesus that, uh, that we, we pray, oh God, may you lift up the countenance of your people. May you bring joy into their homes. May you bring strength into their homes. May you bring healing in Jesus' name. We declare, oh God, that all things are possible to them that believe. So we declare in faith that you are making all things beautiful. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now I wanted, wanted the worship team to do a, a song for us. It's an older song. And I know most of you know it. Blessed assurance. Amen. Jesus is mine. Amen. And uh, so I'd like us to just sing together with the team. Amen. I know they, were, they avoided it the first service. Amen. But I pushed them a little bit. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is Oh, my. 
whispers of love. This is my story. Come on, sing together with us. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior. Worship team may see seat, amen. If you want to sit up front, it's only I understand. Bless the Lord, amen. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long, amen. Perfect submission, perfect delight. I in my Savior am happy and blessed, amen. I want to just, I'm excited about what God is doing and how God strengthens and how God blesses and how God takes care of us. How many of us know that God, you are in for God to do something supernatural in your life? How many of you are expecting God to do something great? Amen. You're going to finish this year strong. Come on. I declare over your life you will finish this year strong. Amen. You're going to set the standard for what you're going to step into in 2021. Amen. We know the year has been difficult. We know there's been challenges. We know that there are still challenges to come. Amen. But I can assure you, you're going to finish strong. You're going to start off 21, 2021 strong. Amen. In the name of Jesus. God is going to show up in your, on your behalf. I want to share today with you a few thoughts from the scriptures. Uh, in portions of scripture that uh, from the book of 1 Kings chapter 17. And uh, as I share this with you, I pray that you are encouraged. We're going to look at, at, at 1 Kings 17 and Genesis 26. I want to speak on a topic today, provisions and blessings in strange places. Now, it's easy for us to accept when blessings come from places where we expect it. Amen? But how many of us know that God can bless you irrespective of where you are. Irrespective of what is going on in your life. Irrespective of the external environment.
God's blessing and hand of blessing can be upon you. How many of you know that God can use strange people and strange circumstances to be a blessing? Sometimes it could have been a, a loss of a job. It may have been a relocation. But sometimes it was a repositioning. It may have not just been the fact that God just wanted to move you for the sake of moving you. But God moved you so that he could bless you. And so I declare over your life today that God will bless you. And God will enlarge you irrespective of the circumstances and the place that you find yourself in. Let's go to the book of 1 Kings chapter 17. Blessings in strange places. Amen. Now I'm excited about this sermon. And the major reason I'm excited about it is because I'm learning to understand that it doesn't have to be conducive in times or conducive environment for God to bless me. God can bless me even when everything is contrary. In, even in the midst of great opposition, even in the, great, in the moment of great trials, God can still take care of you. How many of you know that you're a son and a daughter of God? How many of you know that you're an heir of the promise? That you're a joint heir with Christ Jesus? That how many of you know that you are the seed of Abraham? And as the seed of Abraham that you are blessed. You are blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. Blessed is your basket. Blessed is your kneading bowl. Amen. Blessed is the fruit of your lips. Amen. The words that you declare. Blessed is the fruit of your home. Blessed is your household. Is blessed because God has, has said it to be. So even when the environment is not conducive. God is still going to take care of you. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, a very popular scripture. We've looked at it sometimes. But I want to talk to you about some of the things that even in the dry places, even in the strange places, even in, in the times of famine, God will take you to a place to teach you something that will shape you for where he's taking you to after that. How many, how many of you know that tough times don't last? Only tough people do. Amen? Tough times don't last. Only tough people do. How many of you know that it's not winter all the time? That means that sometimes there's going to be a change of seasons. And in the change of seasons, God will take care of you and God will watch over you. So in, 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 in 1 Kings 17, and Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall, be, shall not be dew nor rain these years according to my word. Isn't that powerful? Someone that is able to speak and says there will be no dew, no rain according to my word. Elijah had come into that place of authority where he realized that when he speaks, he speaks as the servant of the Lord. And when he speaks as a servant of the Lord, the word of the Lord that is in his heart, that is God has dropped in his heart as he releases it as, a, as an oracle of God, the heavens will respond, ensuring the fulfillment of the word, and all of creation must respond like how they responded to the word of the Father in Genesis 1, when he looked upon the face of the earth and he says, let there be light, and it was. He says, let there be sun, moon, and stars, and it was. That same creative grace that, that, were, that was released as the, the heavenly Father will open up his mouth at creation and begin to speak everything into existence. Elijah in this moment begins to speak to an evil king, Ahab, um, a man that has brought Israel into idolatry, has brought uh, pagan worship in, even in, over Israel. He comes over him as standing in the authority of God with the power and the, and the grace of God upon his life. He says, at my word, there will be no rain. And he didn't say it for a day. He didn't say it for a moment. He didn't say it for an hour. He said, for years, it's going to be. Now, this is the powerful thing. He had to declare, declare a word and live in the fulfillment of it. It would have been one thing if he had to be far removed 
from the calamity that was coming over Israel. But God in the midst of that calamity says I'm going to take care of you. Because you have been obedient to me I will take care of you. And then the word of the Lord came to, to, to him in verse 2. It says, verse 3, Get hence from here, turn eastward. Hide yourself at the brook of Cherith, that is by the Jordan, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I, will, I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. And so he went and did as the word of the Lord had told him, and he went and dwelt at the brook of Cherith, that is before the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank at the brook. Amen. God said to him, after he spoke the word, go to Cherith, go to a little town. Go, there is a brook at Cherith, of Cherith. Go there, and at the brook, I'm going to take care of you. Blessings and provisions in strange places. He goes to the brook of Cherith. There's flowing water, water for him to drink. And God says, now I'm going to do something strange. I'm going to send a raven to feed you. Now, if you know anything about the characteristic of a raven, it is a bird that uh, feeds of dead flesh. It's a, it, it's a very selfish bird. It's a very... It looks after itself. It doesn't care for anybody else. So for it to bring food to Elijah is out of character for the nature of the bird. But God says, I'm going to take you to Cherith. And Cherith means a place of separation. And at the place of separation, you're going to have water. And you're going to have a meal in the morning and a meal at night. You're not going to starve. Just because you provided and you proclaimed the word of the Lord, I'm going to preserve you. Just because of your obedience, I'm going to take care of you. Some of you need to become clear in your hearts that when God says you to do something, you do as according to what God said you to do. No, no different. Remember, he had to realize, Elijah realized that he spoke the word and the, and, and, and the atmosphere and the climate responded to the word. There was no rain. There was no dew. But he also had to understand, believe that that same word will work another miracle in his life. That means God told him, say this, and it was. Now God said to him, go there. And when you go there, this is what is going to happen. I want you to get to the place where you will be obedient to what God wants for your life. Some of you ha have seen God work in certain areas of your life. But there are some areas of your life you have decided, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it the way I know how. Remember, in the midst of the famine, he could have relied on his own skill, his own resource, his own ability to provide for himself. But God says, because you have been obedient to me, I will provide for you. I want you to understand for those that uh, have been walking in the obedience of the Lord, the Lord will sustain you. Amen? The Lord will sustain you. The, if you remain obedient to the word of the Lord, the Lord will sustain you. But the Lord says, I want you to separate yourself. There are sometimes God cannot speak to you in the midst of others around you. He has to speak to you in the moment of where he separates you. He pulls you away. He pulls you apart and he says, okay, now, listen, come closer. God had to separate Elijah. And when he separated him, he provided for him. I'm here to say to you, even if God had to speak to the ravens to feed you, God will bless you. Even if God has to use somebody that is selfish, self-centered, to bless you, he'll do that. Even if it's out of the character of somebody else, God will move on their character to bless you. I'm here to say to you, even in the midst of the fam famine, in the midst of the calamity, in the midst of all that is happening around the world and happening in our country and the economy is declining, people are losing jobs, all of those things, believe God that God will sustain you in the middle of the famine. Why? Because you're the child of God. Why? Because you are his son and you are his daughter. He's going to do this. 
But not only did he keep him there. The Bible says there came a moment. After a little while, the brook dried up. Because there was no rain. What do you do? When that which was sustaining you. No longer sustains you. What do you do. When that which has been protecting you. Is no longer protecting you. What do you do. When that which was providing for you. Is no longer providing for you. How do you handle it. What do you do? What do you say? Imagine how Elijah felt. God has been faithful to you. I did what you asked me to do. I said what you asked me to say. Now I find myself in this place where I'm now dependent on you again. And so he comes to that place where he says, Lord, speak to me. And then the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came to him and said to him, arise. Go to Zarephath. I'm here to say to you, God is faithful. When you are obedient, when you are faithful to God, God will be faithful to you. There was no gap in the provisions of God. There was no gap in the provisions of God to his servant Elijah. There will be no lack of the provisions of God in your life. Amen? I want you to, to understand Although there may be a drought, although there may be e economic decline on the earth, it doesn't mean there's an economic decline in the heavens. The heavens have not run, run short of resource. I want you to understand the heavens are heavy with the resources of God. The heavens are heavy with the provisions of God. Amen? There's no lack. And so he goes and he says to him, go to Zarephath. He says, arise and go to Zarephath. And he says, when you go there, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain you. So he arose and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called her and he said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And she was going to fetch it. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and he says, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, as the, as the Lord God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering these two sticks, that I may go and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as I have said, but make thereof a little cake first, for me first. Bring it to me, and after, make for you and your son. And thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal will not waste, neither of the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did as according to Elijah said and she and he and her house did eat many days the and the meal of oil did not waste and the cruise of oil did not fa fail according to the word of the lord which was spoken by elijah come on i declare over your life whatever is the resource in your hand will not waste nor fail there will be no lack over your life till the Lord sends rain again. Irrespective of what is happening. David says, I was young, now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging bread. You've got to learn how to get up in the morning and speak the word of the Lord concerning your life, concerning your family. You know what the statistics are. You don't repeat what you hear is the opinion or the public opinion. You declare the word of the Lord. You live in the dimension of the spirit, so you declare the word of the Lord. That way, the Bible says, when the waters failed, and there was no more water in the brook of Cherith, he didn't say there was no more food from the raven. He says there was no more water for him to drink. God says to him, now go to Zarephath. 
He says, I have commanded a widow woman to take care of you. I want you to understand, God didn't send him to somebody that had a lot. God didn't send him to a wealthy home. God didn't send him to the richest man in the city. God sent him to a widow woman. Come on, she didn't have enough for herself. She was just getting by on her own. And God says to her, now you tell, don't only take care of yourself, take care of the man of God. And as you take care of the man of God, things are going to begin to multiply in your house. God was about to do a miracle in the widow woman's house, but he was going to begin to do the miracle through her obedience and her ability to begin to take care of the man of God. I want you to understand, you may be saying what is in my hand is just a little bit. You may be saying what I have is just a little bit for me to get by but I'm here to say God is about to multiply God is about to breathe upon what he's put in your hand and as you begin to see the hand of the Lord begin to move this is what is going to happen the Bible says and he goes to the, the to the woman God says to him go to the woman I commanded her I commanded her to sustain you the Lord spoke to the widow woman whether she listened or not is not the issue. I mean, the fact is, when Elijah showed up, she acted like she didn't know what he's talking about. If she would have put two and two together, she would have realized, God told me, I'm going to send someone your way. But she, she, when Elijah said to her, give me some water to drink, she was prepared to give him. Because that wasn't a hard thing. There was water enough. You see, sometimes it's easy for us to give God out of what we already have. It's harder to give him out of our lack. It's harder to give him when we don't have. Because when he asked her for water, she went, she didn't question, she didn't ask anything else. She was going to get the water. And he said, while you're going to get the water, just get me a little cake. And then she stopped. She says, I don't have a cake. All I have is a little flour in the barrel and a little oil. I'm going to make a little cake for me and my son. A little, everything is a little. And we're going to eat it and we're going to die. What she saw in the barrel of flour, what she saw in the flask of oil, was enough to sustain her just for one more meal. I do not know whether you've ever been at the end of everything you've got. And you're at the end of everything you've got. There's just the last of the last in it. And you're saying, I'm just about, I'm finished. If God don't show up, it's over. You know, it's, it's not just about having nothing in your cupboard anymore to cook. It may have been months, it may have been years, you've been unemployed. It may have been, you've been going from month to month, you've been going from moment to moment, you've been just living and you've been saying, Everything is about to go. The electricity bills are gone up. They're about to cut off my services. I'm not able to hold on to the house anymore. Every month there is a, you, you know, you may be earning money, but every month there are more bills than, than income. But I'm about to say to you something. There's a secret in God's word. God sends him to Zarephath. Zarephath means a place of refining. God was going to, he says, I separated you. Now I'm going to refine you. It's at Zarephath, the Bible says for years, he's in the house of the woman at Zarephath. But it all took the initial miracle. He said to her, I heard what you said, but go and make a cake for me first. Then make for yourself. The thing is that sometimes if, past, if I as your pastor come and preach that to you and says give to God first and then live. You say pastor you don't understand. 
The contemporary word is pastors gone greedy. The church only worries about itself. It wasn't a test of anything else but a test of their heart. Would you give God your first? And trust him for the rest. Or do we do it in reverse? Do we do it, make a cake for ourselves first? And whatever is left, we'll do something for the Lord. The miracle lie in the obedience to the word. Make something first for me. It may have seemed like a hard thing. In the present day, if someone, if a man of God had to go and say anything like that to anybody, people will begin to take, it will, will take exception to it. People will talk. He may even be on TV, in the news, or in the newspaper, or on WhatsApp, on everybody's status. Pastor says, bring to him first. Imagine Elijah in the midst of the famine. You're saying, don't you understand the climate? And you're saying, take care of me. It's not just about a widow woman. But look at everybody suffering around us. And here you come with a, with a thing that you're saying, take care of me. But, 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 but in this, it's not about taking care of him. It's ob about obeying a principle that is going to create provision for the rest of the famine. I want you to get beyond the point of saying, this is how I'm, I'm going to begin to handle this. Get to the place of saying, what is God saying concerning this? And how is God going to begin to break through on my behalf? Remember the, 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 the lady that when, Jesus, when they all were bringing offerings and the, and, and the widow woman brought her last mite and Jesus said she gave more than all of them? It's not that she gave more in terms of quantity of money or in value of money. She gave more because she gave all that she had. She didn't give a percentage of what she had. She gave everything that she had. And then Jesus said she gave more than these all. It's almost like I'm bringing my ten rand and my ten rand is all that I got. And somebody puts a thousand rand and God says the ten rand is more than the thousand rand because the reality is I'm not giving a percentage of what I've got, but I'm giving everything that I've got. I want you to understand this was not the only widow woman in Zarephath. But God was about to change things around in her house. I want you to understand something. When God begins to put you in a certain place, it's not for difficulty, it's for him to begin to manifest his glory in you. And because he has placed his hand on you, don't miss that opportunity. God could have chosen any other household in Zarephath, but God chose that house. God have, could have chosen any other house in, in Chatsworth, in Amkabab, in Olovo, but he chose your house. Why? If you understand the secret of it, of how God's hand of favor and blessings flows, how God is about to turn a moment this lady is not just going to worry about living for that day. But for years, she's going to be sustained. That's why the Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters. And after many a day, it will come back to you. You know, some of us, I've seen people that have been unemployed for months and years. And God sustained them. Months and years. There's still a roof over their head, a meal on the table. God was taking care of them. You know what was the secret? The secret was that when you don't have, you don't complain. But you turn towards him that is your Jehovah Jireh, that the one that is your provider, that is who, the one who says, my grace is sufficient for you. When I'm weak, I'm strong. When I'm poor, I'm richer. I understand that my dependence comes from him. I'm here to say to you, God is about to do something in your life. God is going to move on it. Some of you may be saying, but pastor, I've been out of work. I don't have anything. I don't have anything to give. It's not only about you being able to bring an offering or bring a tithe. Bring a tithe of your life. Bring a tithe of your time. 
give something to the Lord. You may, you may not have a job now, but you've got time. You can say, how can I serve the house of the Lord? How can I do something for my God? That he can begin to move and multiply on my life. Don't sit back and say, I'm, I'm waiting for a job. And when God blesses me, I will honor him. And even when God blesses you with a job, when you didn't have a job, you knew how it felt without having a job. So when you have a job, don't make it an inconvenience for you to begin to bless the Lord. Begin to understand what he's placed in your hand and honor him with it. I want you to understand this. God will sustain you. Zarephath was his refining moment. It wasn't only for the protection of the man of God. It was for her own protection, her own preservation, her own blessing. I want you to change your perspective. When you give, when you are faithful, when you sow seed, whatever you do, it's not only for your own protection, but it's for your preservation, for your provisions, for an open heaven over your life. You speak to that seed that you are releasing. And you say, God, begin to respond in the name of Jesus. I ask you to respond over this seed. I ask you to speak over this. I, I'm believing God. I want you to get to the place where, where when you got seed in the ground, you can speak. The woman began to create, make for the man of God. And then she made for herself. And the Bible says, and the barrel of meal did not waste. Neither did the cruise of oil fail. I'm here to say to you. Things are not going to stop in your life. Genesis 26, you can go read it for yourself. Isaac is in the, in the land of Gerar. There's a famine. He's in the land of Gerar. And the Bible says, and in the same year, he gained a hundredfold. He planted in the famine when everybody else was experiencing famine. He planted in that same famine. And he experienced a hundredfold increase. Hundredfold of crop, you know. In times of famine, the ground doesn't produce as normal. Even the animals don't reproduce as normal. But the Bible says there was a hundredfold increase in that year. Abimelech came. The king of the Philistines came and they, they fought him and they said to him, please leave us. You have become greater than us. And they became afraid of him. And they asked him to move. I want you to know even when, when, when opposition comes, Isaac had to deal with opposition. So he moves there to the valley of Gerar. He's in the valley. And in the valley, he goes and dig a well. He, go, he finds the well that his father dug before the, uh, the Philistines filled it up with earth. He goes and he digs that well. And as he digs it, the water begins to flow again. I'm here to say to you, some of you are going to see supernatural favor of God. You are going to begin to dig up wells, even in dry places. And all of a sudden, water will begin to flow. And you know, the reality was, there was no water there before. And they, uh, and, and they allowed him to use it. But when he went to use the place, and the waters began to flow, they began to fight him for it. And they began to fight him for it because of value. Some of you in your life, you've experienced where you've helped people. And there was a dryness, and things wasn't working out. And you went there, and you helped them. And when you helped them, things started to grow. And when it started to grow, they kicked you out. They did it with Isaac. The Bible says, the, the first one he named Essek. It basically means strife. Then he went and he dug another well at Sitna. And when he dug the well at Sitna, they came and fought him for that as well. But Isaac did not fight them. Because a blessed man and woman of God doesn't have to fight somebody. Because they know wherever they go, blessings follow them. Amen? You can't keep a blessed man or woman of God down. God will begin to cause them wherever it is. He'll make rivers in desert places. He'll make walkways. Even in places where there is no opportunity, God will create an opportunity for you. Even if there's no employment in that company, they will create a position for you. I, I'm seeing God beginning to enlarge your territory and beginning to, you've got to believe this in your spirit. You've got to get it on the deep down in your heart. Don't say, I'm not sure. I'm, uh, this is, get to the place where you're saying, I believe I am a child of God. Change your confession. Change your declaration. You live in the capacity of that which you declare 
and speak. So he begins to go and dig at Sitna. The wells begin to flow. They're fighting for it. And he sends them out. He gives it to them and he moves. Till the place he comes to Rehoboam. This time he's not digging in the wells of his father. He's digging his own well. And as he digs, waters begin to flow. And this time, there's no more fight in the Philistines. I believe God is giving you rest from your enemies. God is giving you rest. Blessings in strange places. People that spoke against you, they say, what more can we do to pull this person down? Every time we try to pull them down, all, all God does is create another opportunity. Till the point when the Philistines realize they're not fighting Isaac. They're fighting God. I want you to know people can't fight you. They're fighting your God. And he is fighting on your behalf. In the name of Jesus. When he digs up at Rehoboth, he says, now he calls the place Rehoboth. He says, for now the Lord has made room for us. We'll be fruitful and we'll multiply. Come on. I pray that God will give you a discerning moment. Some of you are going to step into new blessings. Some of you are going to step, step into bigger houses and bigger dwellings. Some of you are going to come into your own. You're going to be able to buy your own. Amen. I see God bringing you out of debt. I see God beginning to cancel debt over your life. I see God beginning to create opportunities for you. I, I declare that God is opening doors for you. You, you may say, but pastor, you know what is happening around us. I know what is happening upon us. That's what makes it the miracle. That's what makes it God. That's what makes it God beginning to move on your behalf. I see God beginning to restore. Some of you, that which the caterpillar and the canker worm and the palmer worm has destroyed. You have once uh, begun to, to, to have much things but you lost it along the way but God is beginning to restore it again in your life that's what God does so much so that even the enemies of Isaac come back to him and says surely God is with you I'm here to say to you people are going to see the hand of the Lord upon your life again though you sow in tears you'll reap with joy blessings in strange places. Let's just stand. Come on. If you believe, if you believe, if you believe and I believe, and we together pray, the Holy Spirit must come down. And God is going to have His way in us. We bless you, Lord. So if you hear this morning, like the widow of Zarephath, she said, I'm going to take care of the things of God. God sustained her. God will sustain you. We would never be able to earn enough, have enough. But when God breathes upon what you have, the little becomes much in the master's hand. So I pray over your people today. May there be a stirring. Even if they find themselves in uncomfortable, strange locations. May they see, O oh God, that you are making way for them even in the desert. Let there be an oasis of blessings. An oasis of provisions. We honor you and we bless you, Lord, for what you are doing in the lives of your people. We rejoice in the God of our salvation. We rejoice in the God of our strength. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. So bless your people today. May the heavens respond to their faith. According to their faith, let it be unto them. Let them have victory over every area. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. And amen, amen. Our worship team will lead us in song as we take up our...